Hey, I'm Sean Cannon, and you know me as Karate's bad boy, Mike Barnes. You're listening to Karate Fanatics, and if you're not, then your karate's a joke. What's going on, everybody? Karate Kid Fanatics back here again. Uh, today's guest, Sean Cannon, Mike Barnes from Karate Kid 3, as well as Cobra Kai. Sean, thanks for joining us today. It is my pleasure, brother. Good to be back with you. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we were, you know, talking this before we got on air, you know, so is it true that you did have you were supposed to get surgery before getting called for this season and you kind of just had to postpone your surgery? Yeah, I um, I went to go see my surgeon and was going to schedule surgery. And I told him that I, I thought I was going to be doing um, season six of Cobra Kai, but I hadn't been asked yet. And um, he said, look, you know, if I need the surgery, you're you're not going to do season six of Cobra Kai anytime soon. And uh, you know, I, I kind of rolled the dice that they were going to call me back and I postponed the surgery and um, Josh Held wouldn't tell me exactly who I was going to be fighting, but he said that I was going to have this bucket list fight. Right. So I really thought it was going to be Terry Silver. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I knew that I was going to have to do a fight uh, with the shoulder. And fortunately, you know, Don Lee, who's the, um, the fight choreographer, um, is, is terrific. And he was able to structure the fight in a way that I was primarily able to do it with my one side. So I didn't have to, uh, um, use my bad arm. My, my shoulder got a lot worse after I got back. Right. So I was able to do the fight. You guys all saw it, but I, I couldn't do it now. There's no way I could do it yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, before we get into the fight and some of your other cool stuff, you know, what was it kind of like for you just to kind of get back into more of the fierce Mike Barnes character? Um, you kind of did see season five, but right. more of, you know, as Barnes even told, you know, Daniel was just you kind of got more. In, what was it like for you as an actor kind of getting to go back sort of, you know, to the well, it was it was a lot of fun to be able to, you know, play the part of Mike Barnes that has that edge right. um, as an actor. That's one of the easier things for me to do playing you know, playing anger and menace and that sort of stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's not real difficult, um, but it's a really critical part of this character. And I was glad that we got to bring some of that back. I, you know, I think that Mike Barnes still has that, that toughness and that edge, but it now has a maturity to it that isn't that, you know, sociopathic kid that we saw at 17. Right. Um, which I like. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he's grown out of it. Um, you know, I, I ultimately don't think Mike Barnes is a bad guy. I right. think he's done some bad things as a kid, but a lot of people have, um, you know, but I, I think that life has kind of knocked him around a little in these recent years. Um, not the least of which is probably recently losing his wife uh, after the fire of his furniture store. And I think the thing that seems to be, if I had to guess on his mind, forefront, are two things. The first is continuing his, his redemption journey. And I think Mike agreeing to um, train the kids and help judge who goes to the Sakai Taikai is his way of saying to Daniel, you know, I, I'm sorry for what I did. I want to do something for you. But he's going to do it on his own terms. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I asked uh, the director and the writers when I was down there, when you first see Mike being introduced, I had that line where I say, you know, I blew my chance. And I look over at Daniel and I, I, I asked if I could add the line, but I'm here to make sure that you don't make the same mistake. Hey, Ty Kai, but I blew my chance. I am here to ensure that you maximize yours. Because I felt that that gave from the beginning Mike Barnes a reason why he's doing what he's doing. And it's to help these kids not to be who he was when he was their age. Absolutely. And in doing that, he's able to further gain some redemption. Yeah. So with that uh, really cool black and red gi you wore, I mean, that thing, that's. Dude, let me that's, tell you what, that is so badass. Yeah. You know, um, the costume designer, Frank Helmer, designed that specifically for me it has your style of karate you studied on it right well i so shotokan was the first martial art i studied but i really was under the umbrella of sensei fumio demura's fumio demura's martial arts you know sensei demura was pat marita's stunt double yeah and i asked for permission to use it and his family because he had just passed away 
And his family just said, you know, Sean, um, we're very protective of it. And, you know, they didn't want to see it wind up being on a, you know, kid's Halloween costume. Absolutely. And I understood that and I respected it. And so I, I said to Frank, I said, you know, this is a big responsibility. I said, you know, we're being given the opportunity to decide for the fans what style of martial arts Mike studied. Absolutely. And, and you know, my first choice was to go with uh, Genbukai, which is what I studied, which is very similar to Miyagi-Do. Right. Um, and then I said, okay, you know, let's go with Shotokan, which is what I first started learning in martial arts. And that's what we went with. And interestingly enough, Shotokan is a Japanese martial art and Cobra Kai is based from Tang Soo Do, which is uh, a Korean one. So right. it's interesting that, you know, we have Korean martial arts and Japanese represented. And, and actually Mike, who was with Cobra Kai, even though he wasn't really in Cobra Kai. Right, right. We kind of like, uh, it's kind of like when a race car driver gets sponsored by uh Pepsi, you know, we yeah, slap the label on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Mike was actually trained in Japanese karate, and uh, that's what you know. Daniel is teaching Okinawan Japanese, arguably. Um, so they've got more in common than they think. Yeah, I guess you know when we uh, see you going in for the uh, fight scene with Johnny, you know, and I guess your furniture set. I guess you ended up selling that painting, huh? Ha! I don't know what we're doing with it. You know, uh, I mean, I looked it up, and it's worth arguably a hundred million dollars yeah so I, I don't know that's a what, furniture universe there or something yeah, yeah that's a furniture universe there um you know you got to think that barnes has got that thing stowed away somewhere right yeah 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 so you know going into uh you know the fight scene with william zapka what was it like you know to film that and when did you uh find out that that was you know who you were gonna have your fight scene with well i found out i found out uh you know prior to going down to atlanta and I, I was excited. I mean, I know the fans have wanted it for quite a while. Um, you know, Billy's a terrific martial artist. Um, the, the biggest challenge uh, for me, apart from my shoulder, was, you know, Billy's really busy during right. production. I mean, he was much more busy, much more busy than I was. And so, you know, I had lots of time to go and, you know, rehearse the fight scene with the stuntmen. Um, and of course, the fight changed from what it was originally you know they're always tweaking it and doing different things so there's a certain aspect of having to relearn it and billy was trying to watch it you know on video and everything and then we were able to run it i think we only ran it one day wow, you know? yeah. and and you know he's terrific though and um you know the first thing the most important thing is nobody gets hurt and for the most part nobody got hurt and when i say hurt i mean punched in the face i, I got hurt but it wasn't from getting hit I, uh, I had to break a table and, yeah, and, yeah. and we did a, the stuntman actually broke the table, which I was a little disappointed and he did a fantastic job, but I broke the table in season five. So I was like, I can do it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. we rehearsed it one time and, and the table was further back than I thought. And so when I fell, I fell right boom to the ground and I, oh, yeah. my whole arm was black and blue and but you know that happens i mean you know nobody got punched in the face which is the big thing um and uh you know i, I thought it was a pretty decent fight scene the final product i gotta ask you you know you've now had fight scenes with a lot of these legacy characters chosen daniel uh you know johnny now like out of all the fight scenes you've had you know from the karate kid three universe to cover Kyle, what is your personal favorite one you've got at miyagi as well what is your favorite you've got to have Well, you know, I like different ones for different reasons. I mean, I, I like the All Valley Tournament because, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I was a guy that bought a ticket for the first two films. Right. And then so right. there I am in the Black Gi at the All Valley Tournament, and my name's the one at the top with, with right, Dan right. Bruce. I mean, it's just like a pinch me moment, right? And yeah. you've got hundreds and hundreds of extras applauding, and it was a big to-do, okay? And right. so... You know, plus I got to beat the crap out of someone instead of getting the crap beat out yeah, of me. So absolutely. That was a big deal. Um, um, so I like that for that reason. Um, you know, there I was fighting with the karate kid. Absolutely. Um, I definitely did not like uh, getting punched in the face of the book with uh, uh, Terry Silver. Yeah. Um, you see it. <laughs> um, I 
I love doing the one with Billy. Um, I, I, I like doing the one with Yuji. It was a lot of fun, um, especially because, you know, we got to break the table and um, there was some comedy in it too. There were kind of some homages to Hong Kong, uh, martial, Kung Fu martial arts, you know, <laughs> you know, Yuji yeah. and I both look over to the camera. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I like each of them for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to ask you, I mean, this is something we've been waiting for your character here. You know, the, your karate joke. We almost got that on you. What was it like being able Dude, to that was so cool. Own, that was so cool. And I have to be honest. I asked Josh, I said, I said, can we please get your karate as a joke in there? Cream puff. Your karate is a joke. And man, he did me a solid uh, putting it in there because, you know, that's kind of like the, you know, you know, I don't know. Does does Daniel even have a catchphrase? I don't know. Not like not. I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I don't There's think Terry really Silver like, does, or you, or, or Chosen, or even Billy. I mean, they got. Although, like, no, Priest has although no Billy, mercy, don't, don't don't diss the valley. That might be Billy's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> catchphrase. I, yeah, I loved how uh, you were talking about that kata crap when that's kind of you know that crazy, was your great. downfall, you know. Yeah, yeah, that was my downfall, right? So that was that was really fun to to say that line. And I had completely forgotten that somebody yelled uh, in the Karate Kid, "You're a cream puff, Johnny," something like yeah. that. So when they when I had the line, I, I said, "Why am I calling him a cream puff?" And they were like, "Sean," and I was like, "Oh yeah, right now I remember." Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I really in, enjoy working with Billy. Um, it was terrific working with him. Um, you know, I had an absolute sense of trust with him that we were going to do this scene. It was going to be great. It was going to hit the right acting notes and have the right visual result of the fight. And I, I think it did. Absolutely. You know, for you, um, you know, last season you got to work with Billy and Ralph and Yuji, obviously. But what was it like for you to get to work with you know, some of the newer casts and newer characters yeah. of this franchise? They're, they're great kids. They really are. They're they're terrific kids. They're I think you know some of them are going to wind up being stars of not even tomorrow, you know, right. soon. And um, uh, I'm I'm honored to be able to work with them. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, you you talked about the gi, which may or may not be finding its way right into my little man cave here. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I was uh, I was like. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna get so, shadow boxed up 100 percent dude as we speak as we speak it's being done awesome yeah um um and uh you know when, when frank told me the um the, the costume designer that everyone else had a white gi you know i was doing the math in my head visually wow. and i was like what is that gonna be you know visually compelling that everyone's wearing a white gi except for this one guy in this red gi with black yeah. trim and a 10th degree black belt you know and, and and sure enough on camera it just looks spectacular yeah i just remember seeing that photo come out I was like yeah that's badass yeah yeah it was badass wasn't it i'm with you yeah another one of the things I, I haven't really heard many people talk about that i did really enjoy about like mike you know obviously it's not the same backyard y'all are filming in different but him kind of just sort yeah, of like, realizing like oh good to be back here and just shows like the flashbacks and all that. different yeah yeah this looks different since the last time I was here. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know me, I'm always trying to infuse humor where I can. You 100%. know, and so that was a lot of fun. I mean, I, you know, I didn't want it just to be Mike Barnes yelling at people because that's a very one note performance. And I didn't want to do that. And so, you know, I was constantly looking for those little moments of humor through a combination of Mike's nostalgia and how he remembers it. I mean, you know, Daniel was probably terrified. He was like, right. it's one of the worst memories of his life. You know, and Mike's like, I remember this place. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and at the end where he's like, God, Daniel, this is really bringing up my demons. You know, yeah, there's, yeah. A humor to, there's a humor to it. Um, but, you know, in, in all, it, it was a, another terrific experience. It really was. Yeah, so getting into the uh, Battle Royale scene, what was it like filming that? And, you know, what was it like just kind of just the setup? And I, I got to imagine it was probably freezing out there, too, while y'all were filming some of that stuff. Okay, dude, I did not expect Atlanta to be cold. I don't know what I had in my mind. I was thinking yeah, like... Case for you, man. <laughs> so, so a lot of times when we got to the set, it was still dark. Yeah. You know, like it was like dawn. And it was 
bitter cold. Um, and, and, you know, we'd wear sort of, you know, insulated type jackets, but then you got to take them off and right. it's cold for sure. Um, and I don't know how we, we avoided seeing breath, you know, um, um, yeah. being, yeah. being blown, but, but it was really cold when we shot in those woods. Oh you know, yeah. Y'all are all bundled up and yeah. Woo, that was cold. Yeah. Um, and then it would get really hot. Then the sun would come up at noon and then it's like really hot. Um, but listen, man, it, you know, I'm of the mind any day you get the chance to be working as a professional actor in Hollywood. And of course, Atlanta's not Hollywood, but we say Hollywood, you know, it's a pretty good day, man. You're getting, you're getting paid to do what you love. And especially when you're getting paid to do what you love on a project that's already a hit and it's got fans. And I mean, you know, I, I would have stayed down there as long as they would have wanted me to. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, we all see in your uh, TMZ interview, you were talking about some spin off. Yeah. But, you know, well, I wasn't. Well, I mean, I was talking about it because they asked me the question. Right, right, you know, right. I wasn't alluding to, you know, I don't want, I don't want to put anything else out there. I mean, there's, I've heard from some people, but you know, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I can't really say anything. I gotta do ask you though, if you could, you know, have it like, if, if there was one basis you could maybe have for one, what's maybe just a yeah. idea? Or well, I'll tell you. I mean, I mean, I think it would be really, really great. I had pitched this on social as a joke. I said, you know, yeah. uh, chosen in, in Barnes, you know, senses by day, detectives by night. Yeah, and then yeah. we're both single and trying to negotiate the over 50 dating scene, yeah. you know, and not doing so well. And, right, right. you know, they, you know, they're roommates because they really don't have any money. And, yeah. and chosen just like kind of, you know, loves to get drunk and is kind of a slob sometimes. And Barnes has got like some OCD and, you yeah, know, he's yeah. kind of free. or, you know, or Barnes and Barnes and uh, Lawrence would be great. I mean, I think they're very much in a lot of ways they're cut from the same cloth. Right. Um, so I, I think that would be a ton of fun, but you know, for me, I would welcome any opportunity to work with John Horowitz, Hayden Schlossberg and uh, Josh held again, or any of the cast on the show. I mean, it was a, uh, um, it was a very special experience and things like that don't always come along in a career. And if they do, sometimes they come along once and so far it's come along twice for me. And so I'm just full of gratitude and, and humbled by it. One of the biggest things I think with Barnes, like you've only been in three episodes, but I feel like your impact is like kind of set the trajectory of like the show, like going forward. Yeah, it's the story of my career. Sean Kane and the greatest kept secret in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, they all, somebody said it. I don't remember who. There's, there's no small parts, only small actors. And you know, right. for me, I, I always try and do the absolute most with what I'm given, and and make it have as big an effect. And um, you know, it, it seems to have resonated with everybody. Um, and again, I'm just thankful for it. I mean, would, would I have loved to have been in as many episodes as possible? Sure, but you know, there's a there's a lot of story to tell. And again, I'm just I'm just very appreciative that I was. Uh, given an invitation to come back again for season six. Have you got the opportunity to see the uh, first five episodes yet? Uh, I've had the opportunity to see the first five. I have seen the first four. I have not watched the okay. final five. Like I said, I had surgery last week and my life's been a little chaotic, um, but I'm absolutely going to watch that. I'm looking forward to what's coming out in November. I do got to ask you, because what, you know, what do you think of the new Korean, uh, you know, Kim Sung Young's dojo with Kreese's kind of new role and just kind of like the new students, you know, as a viewer? Oh, I, think, I think it's really cool. I think it's a it's a it's a really interesting. Um, I don't want to say it, a left turn. I mean, it's interesting to go back to the roots of where Kreese's and, and Silver's karate came from. Um, terrific martial artists, these Korean guys and girls. I mean, right. uh, you know, um, it's just like aerial ballet. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, prior to going to Atlanta, when I knew I was going to have a, a pretty significant fight scene, I started training um, privately one-on-one -on -one in Taekwondo, which I've never studied uh, because I wanted to just kind of increase my ability to do some different things. And, you know, I, I didn't really get the chance to do anything super flashy in that fight. But I was working on some stuff that would have been a little less 
associated with Japanese karate and more with something like Taekwondo or, or um, Tang Soo Do. Um, and it was a really good experience that got me interested in Korean martial arts. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious and interested to see how it progresses. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, they're all the cool thing about all them. They're all like legit martial artists, too. So real legit. Yeah. So it's like it's just you can tell, too, sometimes for sure. Yeah, yeah you, for sure you can. And and, you know, they're they're really good actors, too. I mean, yeah. um, you know, you're you're able to see that they're individual characters and that they've all got their, you know, wants and needs as characters. And, and you know, they're they're constructing storylines where you're getting invested in them. Yeah, for sure. You know, one of the what I got to ask you, though, for you, what is your favorite part of the show that you have not been in? Like, same I, line, or, you know, well, so I think I, you mean like if I could you mean something that's existing or, or like a, a, a fantasy scene? No, like it could be something that has happened. Okay, or something you'd love to see. OK, here's my fantasy scene. Uh, for some reason, Daniel is in an absolute jam and needs somebody to work the floor at the car dealership yeah. as a citizen. And he, he saw Barnes doing something and, you know, he's like, Oh my God, the guy's actually a pretty smooth talker. Yeah, and yeah. Barnes becomes like his number one salesman. And now Daniel's got to contend with that. Um, yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, yeah. I, it would have been a lot of fun to be in the episode when all the guys came back, uh, all the Cobra Kai guys came back right. and went on the road trip you know with rob garrison i mean I, I, barnes didn't know any of them right um, so, so from a from a canon point of view it didn't make sense right um um but it would have been a lot of fun right uh gosh that could have been an interesting introduction to barnes too it definitely would have been like a they'd be like who's this guy he's, he's, he's at the bar and he he's he's a mystery guy at the bar who just helps him out in the fight and and then Dan, he music. and Johnny become buddies and he introduces yeah. Daniel yeah. as his new buddy. And Daniel's like Mike fucking Barnes. Yeah. Mike fucking Barnes. Yeah. yeah. Another funny thing I think about this is like, how old is Kim Sung Young? You know, that dude, like, he was old back in Cry Kid 3, you know? Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's kind of like, remember that character in Kill Bill who trains Uma Thurman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? He's probably like 300 years old. He's got that that big trouble in little China mystical martial arts right, blood. Yeah. yeah, even though he's not Chinese, obviously. But yeah, yeah. I, I love it all. I think it's really, really cool. Um, I, I think for the most part, it's gotten very good reviews. Um, you know, it got a, a really nice review on uh, um, Rotten Tomatoes. And um I think it's going to be historic because, you know, they announced that it's the last season. And I, I think that it's probably going There's to prove a lot of people be, back and some of them I've heard of. So I'm very excited. About yeah. That. I mean, I think it's going to probably prove to be one of the most streamed events so far in history. If, if I had to guess. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for joining us again. I really totally, totally. My pleasure. Hey, if you get it, uh, um, I'd like to, I'd like to send you a little care package of my, new stuff that where's the there's the uh i got a oh, bunch of cool, i love it. Oh, man uh, this is uh your karate is a joke uh okay, i got yeah. some hats and hats and sweatshirts and all that stuff mm -hmm. so if you um give me your address i'll get that out a, a portion of the proceeds go to help uso which is supporting our troops yeah which i really do like that i really respect you for doing that thank you man your address i'm gonna get that out i'll do that okay? enough here man but like i said okay. appreciate you uh, i'll talk at you later man all right cream puff your karate's a joke. <laughs>